Hello and welcome to the gallery. My name is Jon and tonight let's do something a little bit different. We're not painting a model this time around, however I'm going to a Halloween party tomorrow and I need a costume, so let's make a quick and simple mask. Now I'm no novice to mask making, I've made many masks in my day, usually with paper mache and fabric and cloth and stuff like that, but now I'm just, just using cardboard and I'm gonna do it in a fairly quick manner because like I said this is done in all in one night, so I have to be really rather quick about it. I start by drawing a rough uh, sketch of uh, the parts I'm going to use one at a time on a piece of paper that I fold in half so I get some sort of symmetry going and I am making a Dr. Doom mask. So I'm going to be Dr. Victor Van Doom and I just start with one piece, cut that out, put it on some cardboard, see if it looks about okay. Then I cut it from the cardboard, bend it a little bit how I want it to look. Be careful that the grain of the cardboard is facing in the way I want it to face because it makes it easier to fold and makes curves a little bit more natural. And then I just cut it out and uh, try and hope for the best. That's basically my method. It's just a little bit here, adding a little bit, making one piece, see if that's okay, making another piece putting that together as you can see it's just uh, a box of some shoes and I'm hot gluing bits together like and this is the first part this is basically the skeleton that I will work on top of and sometimes I don't have any template or anything like that but I freehand it I make a central line and the grooves in the cardboard actually kind of help because they give a rough estimate about how much space each thing is necessary for. And now I'm cutting out the nose, keeping careful to not cut myself or anything else. But the knife is a little bit dull, sadly, so it took a little bit of time to cut this thing. The nose is there, and I'm just going to place it down, hot glue on the inside. I don't want too much hot glue to be actually visible from the outside. It might make things look a little bit smoother, but it's quite annoying when it comes to the painting, because paint really doesn't stick that much to hot glue in my opinion at least but like i said sometimes i just freehand it i have this little uh, tool and i can measure how much space i need for the eyes for the bridge of the nose between stuff so it makes it a little bit easier to have this thing and then i'm cutting a few grooves so i can bend it all together to make some sort of curvature to it and i will cut a little line out of one side, make a template from that and place it on the other side. It helps a little bit. Then a little bit of glue here, just around the eyes because I just want to get them first fastened down. Then I will curve the rest to the side to make it fit a little bit better. And this is basically my process. I just make another small bit and then another small bit, then another small bit. That's the main idea here because I don't have any drawing of what I'm going for. I don't have any real plan in mind, I'm just going by feeling in this case. And that's okay, I mean, it's a somewhat natural process. If you know what you actually want it to look like, then it can be really fun to do it and meditating. Now that we've done the mask out of cardboard and hot glue and various other bits like that, Let's do a quick and simple paint job, which will bring it a little bit more to life, and then we can see how it looks. And now it's the painting process. We have the entire mask sort of ready. It looks a little bit rough and not cardboardy at this point, but hopefully with a little bit of paint we can make it look a little bit better. So I start by priming everything in black. This both keeps it a little bit easier to get some extra paint on it. Also it will hide a lot of the mistakes that might be there and if you see some giant faults we can always go back and fix it before we've gone too far. 
I know the black primer hasn't dried really that much, but that's kind of okay in this case. It's just for one night, so I'm not too worried. I'm adding a little bit of silver paint to black paint, so I got this dark silver now, and I'm base coating the entire mask in this color. Uh, the reason why I'm using this color instead of something a little bit brighter is because I like to work from dark to light and in this case it was maybe even a little bit too light but anyway I'm continuing on with silver spraying that over top and trying to find where I want the highlights it's mostly on the front of the face because he has this green cow and therefore the back it doesn't really matter all that much now I'm just spraying silver where I want it to be the brightest and then I will go back and draw put a little bit of dark now underneath uh, the chin underneath the eyes on the sides of the face everything like that darken it out a hell of a lot I have ink in the silver now and as you can see it's quite a lot darker but this gives it more value on the mo on the not model on the mask because it starts to look a little bit more dynamic and that's basically the main thing we have to go for because the actual structure doesn't look that good so we need to have a little bit of more dynamic in it now a little bit of brushwork i just have an olive oil here it's a little bit on the thick side maybe and i'm just doing a little bit of panel lining i'm just placing it underneath all these little panels here and there just to give some extra shadow so it looks a little bit nicer and a little bit more deep now he's got a lot of rivets and I didn't feel like making a hell of a lot of rivets out of milliput or green stuff or whatever. So I'm instead painting thick dollops of black where I want the rivets so it will stand out a little bit. And then I'm highlighting those dollops with a little bright silver and that makes it look a little bit like rivets. And we don't have to do anything fancy. This is for a costume party. Come on. It's not a display model. And then after all of this is done, I'm taking some gloss varnish and I'm brush and I'm airbrushing that over the entirety of the mask. It'll both seal everything in, protect it a little bit. It's cardboard, it's not gonna be a full protection, and also make it a little bit more shiny and looking a little bit more metallic.